Good morning. This is Kalyan from Sai Solution, and uh, you are welcome to uh, the recording. Those who are watching, because I have not seen, uh, I don't see anybody uh, joined live as of now. So uh, Victoria will be joining in a moment. And today's topic, I'll, I'll start about the today's topic uh, in in a while. Uh, hi, Arvinder. Good morning. Yeah, Victoria is here, so let me add her to the session. Yeah, welcome Victoria. I just uh, transferred some photo uh, to you in WhatsApp. Yeah, here. <laughs> here good I morning. am. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. I just got to set up my little yeah, good afternoon for you. Yeah, 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 good afternoon for you. Yeah, good afternoon, yeah. absolutely. I, and indeed, I have had a good morning. I've had some sunshine oh, and I'm sure. exercise, I'm sure. so it's been good. <laughs> great, great. So we'll start at uh, uh, 9.30 only. Uh, so uh, meanwhile, we can just chit chat a bit and uh, let's welcome yes. the people, those who are joining. Uh, okay. So yeah, definitely we had uh, for the audience. Uh, we we uh, just ha uh, concluded a beautiful conference homeostasis last yes. month, where yeah, yeah where Victoria conference. presented uh, two papers uh, beautifully on fever and mindful procreation. And uh, there are a lot of uh, people are joining uh, who uh, already attended our conference. Yeah, Lovely. hi Jordan. Uh, yeah, Arbinder is here. Arbinder was there in yes. the homeostasis. Rings a bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, how how you found uh, the conference, uh, Victoria? Um, it was very um, obviously. I was only participating from a from afar, but um, there was really interesting questions after each one of my presentations, which was great. I love. We love questions, don't we? They really. Uh, because I think from a practitioner's point of view, you can talk to people about what you think, you know, that you're, yes. you want to say, but it's not until they start asking you questions that you can really address maybe the, the gaps in a person's understanding, which is uh, great. So, yeah, because it's a never-ending never um, volume of information there really, isn't it? So uh, there's lots to talk yep, about. Yep, yep, yeah, indeed. Yep. Indeed. Sai, welcome Sai, welcome Mohit. Uh, Minu also has joined. Minu was the organizer, uh, yes. organizing partner of the conference. And we are planning a big way uh, 2020 uh, homeostasis. And we are expecting yes. Victoria to join uh, in person. Yes, right? I'll be, I will be there. <laughs> I've got my, I, 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 right. I, I'm, I'm regularly telling my whole family to prepare for my absence. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Mental preparation. Yeah, yeah Karthik absolutely. has joined. Karthik is a uh, mm. youngster actually who has joined yeah. the conference and the workshop on nature and life also. Oh, wow, well, wonderful. Welcome. Guy. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, hi, yeah. Jordan. Jordan Raul. Uh, uh, great. So I think I think we are just uh, left with one minute more uh, okay. to start our session. Uh, we'll Get start going. at 2 p.m. exactly. Yes, done. Right, so let me... Let me uh, Which is right now. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, in fact, we needed to. Uh, yeah, hi, Soparna. Uh, Arvinder would like to share uh, how cold congestion two days back, nothing come out through last night, developed fever this morning, mucus loosening, all coming out, uh, body aches, reducing. How wonderful body is when you understand it. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's so true. And, and I think that's um, the biggest hurdle that we have to get over. Once you understand it and when you know that the body's not doing anything to harm you, then you can just relax about it. And that's massive. You yep. know, if you can relax about it, if you can have mental rest as well as physical and physiological, then it's so true. much Very more true. effective. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So without uh, much uh, delay, let's start so the topic do. today. And yeah. We'll, uh, yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll go on discussing on the topic. So I'll just, uh, for all the audience, I'll just, uh, uh, yeah, Swatantra has joined. 
morning satandra welcome to the session monosh welcome. has joined so uh, the people will keep on joining so uh, yeah. the topics uh, for the Let's audience let me share the uh, chronic formation is the first topic we'll touch upon yes and uh, cure in nature is the second topic then healing crisis is the third topic uh the the uh, i must say these are the points uh, of the whole topic the topic of the uh, total conversation is chronic cure is impossible without healing crisis so we need to know yeah. about chronic what is chronic yes and yes. so chronic formation is the first topic and mm. then the cure in nature healing crisis what is yeah. healing crisis and how that happens and a point of tolerance the journey mm. from insensitivity to sensitivity Yep. that's that's a very interesting topic yeah. actually yeah uh, yeah absolutely and reduction very of much. the symptoms without healing crisis so there are a lot of confusions about reduction of the uh, symptoms being considered as cure so yes. we'll delve uh, deeper on that uh, aspect and then yep. uh, the next topic is na- natural healing journey is incomplete without healing crisis Sure. Uh, uh the last topic is philosophical shift pain versus suffering mm-hmm. so how we deal with the pain threshold will yes. uh will work on that so yes. meanwhile i'll start uh, the topic with uh, chronic formation mm, yeah so uh, uh, let me share uh, uh, an image in the comment section just for everybody uh if you can just please check the comment section if i can if i can run. i don't see any option to okay okay so uh, whoever are there i'll just uh, share the because uh, i think i think there is no option of uh, adding any image on the okay. comment section on my iphone uh i'll i'll just share this uh, with minu minu can you uh, hear me yeah minu i'll just share that image with you uh, so that you can share it uh, with the audience please right so i'm just sharing uh, through whatsapp that image and meanwhile i'll start the topic yeah so this is the image and please add this description also with the image i've just shared with you right right so chronic formation first of all uh, we need to understand the nature cure uh, concept Na- nature cure concept very deeply nature cure uh, is uh, on the uh, vitality uh, so on the principle of, of vital vital economy nature cure is completely founded so it starts with the voice of the organism how we deal with the voice of the organism and how we uh, sync with the nature if we don't sync with the nature then we end up depleting our vitality and that depletion affects our elimination at the first place when the elimination is affected okay. that time that time what happens is the toxin is retained in the body because elimination necessarily is uh, throwing the toxins from the body so when we retain the toxin when we retain the toxin then that state is called as toxemia so the depletion of vitality lead us to a state called toxemia and that and every every state will come up with the indication to us to so for example the depletion of depletion of the vitality or the inner vision as we term that will come with a tremendous tiredness if we respond mm-hmm. to that then we will not go to the next stage of toxemia so body will react uh, accordingly and the elimination will happen of the toxin so if we don't respond to the body's indication and we suppress those uh, responses how the suppression can happen suppose in the time at the time of tiredness you go for any stimulation maybe coffee take a coffee or alcohol or mm. whatever to yes. stimulate yourself then keep you going. don't respond to that tiredness mm-hmm. you keep going Absolutely. with the tiredness and that restricts the elimination and uh, mm-hmm. restriction of the elimination will lead you to the toxemia state now with the toxemia if you continue with the toxemia without responding to the resting again 
then the toxemia will have lot of irritation that is the third stage so uh, so in the comment section you will be getting these all seven stages of disease the chronification of the disease the chronic formation mm -hmm. so uh so when that irritation happen that also is an opportunity for us to rest again to allow the body to eliminate the toxin if we don't do that if we avoid the irritation by suppressing the sense of irritation with medicines or food or whatever if we do that then we go for the next stage which is inflammation so from innervation to toxemia then irritation to inflammation are the four first stages of the disease so till this point we uh, don't feel uh, a lot of chronic uh, symptoms as such these are mm -hmm. the trials of the body of throwing back the toxins but if we continue with the suppression then the next stage onwards it's a chronification the high con chronification high toxicity mm -hmm. formation happens within the body so post post inflammation the ulceration is the next stage Yeah. So inflammation is actually confinement of the toxin at any part of the body Mass by spot. inflaming mm -hmm. that part by swelling, mm. right? Mm. Mass form. So yeah, when we keep on suppressing that, right? Mean I understand because the in the live session actually the image uh, sharing is not possible. It seems doesn't matter. We'll we'll share that uh, particular image Afterwards. Uh, in the comment section after the live is over for all the audience, okay. right? so let's carry on so now uh, when uh, we keep on suppressing the inflammation inflammation the stage of inflammation then the body will try to tear the skin and throw the toxin out that is the mm. stage of ulceration mm. now the ulceration stage also if suppressed then it leads to the hardening so the Correct. toxins will get hardened mm. toxins will get hardened all the stone formation and all the stuff yeah. happens when yeah. we keep on suppressing all the symptoms yeah. and if the hardened stage the sixth stage is the hardening stage if the hardening stage is also suppressed then it leads to a fungation stage at the stage of fungation or cancer is a stage when the body starts eating itself we say mm. actually that 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 the time the body programmatically realize that it is the time to perish the body Yes, which is the seventh stage of uh, seventh the, stage of disease. The destructive, right. so the destructive form, stage. Yeah, the destructive stage. Destructive yep. stage. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So that way, we actually uh, chronify each symptom by ignorance and suppression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so this is this is uh, all in all uh, the understanding of uh, chronic formation, right? Now, mm. now on this. so this is a formation of chronic uh, state now mm. if we understand if you understand uh, this uh, dialectically then there is an opportunity for us to reverse the stages and the way it progresses the reversal also happens the same way if we start conserving vitality so i i Correct. request victoria if you if you can just lead us to the cure in nature we uh, how how mm. it happens and how we can absolutely uh, absolutely direct our and assist our body yes. indeed well the first thing to oh, understand you. thank you kalyan the first thing to understand if we're talking about cure is that cure can never ever be affected unless we have identified and removed cause that is absolutely step 1 and so you know i say to so many people that come to me and they come to me I have this disease or I have that disease I say no that's your symptom you know the symptom being the skin rash the symptom being the ulcer the whatever that's the symptom the actual disease is behind that it's toxemia it's the cause of it and so what is causing the toxemia so the first thing you must always do is treat the cause not the symptom and so if we can identify and remove causes then we are well on our way towards cure we must also to achieve a cure is provide the biological requirements for the human body these are just as required in sickness as they are in health and so then we apply the eight biological requirements 
And in doing so, by identifying and removing causes, providing the eight biological requirements, we are essentially going to be conserving the vital force of the organism. And at some point, depending on how much vitality the body has, at some point it's going to initiate a crisis of healing. And this is exactly what we're aiming for. And, and so the body will, generally speaking, raise a temperature. Another crisis of healing could be something like a, a skin boil or something like that could be a localised inflammation. But there will be a crisis of healing and mostly we will see we will see fever and it's a rarity that we don't see fever and when we don't see fever there's a number of reasons for it but that's what we're heading towards and and it is through the process of the fever which is an extraordinary effort of the body that the body will will heal itself that a body will throw out this poison throw out these toxins and return itself to a state of health and and all of the acute diseases that we know of in the medical dictionary can all easily be explained under the um, philosophy of nature cure. They're all very obviously um, diseases of elimination, basically. And, and, and disease is, as we know, a curative process. So, um, you know, that is the way we get cure in nature. We don't get cure, you know, because a symptom has has reduced or gone away doesn't mean that we 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 have a cure you know like the 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 symptom is not the disease the symptom is ref, is reflective of the disease and behind that one symptom or two symptoms or however many symptoms there is there's a whole bloodstream and a whole system that is full of waste material full of toxemia and and in the process of curing the body we are going to of course see symptoms start to reduce along the process. So um, we really need to be sure that we know what the difference is between, between cure and between suppression. So um, that, that is cure in nature. Um, and, and it invariably involves the healing crisis. So Kalyan, can you tell our audience from your perspective, what actually is the healing crisis? Yeah, so and healing, healing crisis, crisis definitely. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, healing so crisis, that, 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 more that's than a, more that's than one. If you, if you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it is C R I S E S, not S I S. No, yeah. It's not S-I-S just one. Crisis. <laughs> yeah. So crisis yeah, is a singular. Crises is, is, is a plural. plural. <laughs> so healing crises, we understand. Yes. We need to understand and acknowledge the yes. crises. Mm. You know. So unless we understand and acknowledge it, un- understanding is first part yeah. and definitely a mandatory part. But after that, we need to acknowledge it. Yes. Unless we acknowledge it, the cure never happens. There mm-hmm. could be reduction of the symptoms, as Victoria was mentioning. Mm-hmm. But the real cure will happen for the chronic. So either either your a chronic uh, diagnosis so suppose suppose you are feeling that you are uh, by adopting natural uh, lifestyle. Uh, you you cured your uh, disease, chronic disease, without healing crisis. If that is your assumption or understanding, then be assured that the the diagnosis of the chronic could be a faulty diagnosis so, if yeah, you are really correct. cured yeah. because there was no need of curing, mm-hmm. or the symptoms are reduced. So. Healing crisis is definitely a multiple healing crisis. So I'll just uh, share my personal experience. So I was diagnosed uh, uh, with ankylosing spondylitis, a uh, very um, uh, so-called uh, the prognosis of this uh, disease is very uh, dangerous kind of. Uh, so in 2004, I was diagnosed with that. Right. We'll take up the questions. Uh, I'm just uh, seeing a lot of uh, questions coming up. So we'll take up the questions after some time, after uh, covering a few of the topics. So I was yeah. mentioning about 2004, I was diagnosed with that. And I uh, underwent uh, with the medic medicine, medicine suppression and all those till 2014. And since 2014, I started uh, reversing my lifestyle consciously, mm-hmm. mindfully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then in 2016, I had a long 45 days healing crisis. And that time, Kevin was the backbone of my journey. Uh, so Kevin Hinton, uh, mm-hmm. 
sir late kevin hinton he he was actually every day on my uh, on call and to support uh, that journey so that particular healing crisis with uh, 45 days total bedridden healing crisis with 15 days fever 15 days of fever so mm-hmm. that actually reduced the symptomatic discomfort of my ankylosing spondylitis remarkably mm, i would definitely at that time yeah at that time mm. also kevin said to me and i understand uh, with my research also that that was just one crisis happened yes. it may happen again i have to be yes. ready with that yeah. because yeah. those initiatives of the body mm. is to clear the toxin absolutely so the multiple crises crises yes. is okay. the tool that we need to acknowledge and embrace actually yeah absolutely right so uh, with that actually uh, in, during our calls last week uh, with uh, i and victoria connect very uh, frequently on different topics so we were talking about the point of tolerance mm. on this <laughs> right as you, absolutely. as, you, as yeah. you go on reversing the yeah. reversing the chronic state the point of tolerance of the body is affected and i request victoria to yeah. share that uh, yeah, beautiful absolutely. explanation that you shared with me yes, yes. yeah well point of, point of tolerance is is something that we we really have to understand and a, and a really good example of it is if you think about somebody who's never had a cigarette before in their life they've never smoked a cigarette and they get a cigarette and tobacco is one of the most poisonous plants in nature and so we dry it and we smoke it and we in and we 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 draw the smoke from this into our beautiful pristine clean lungs the first cigarette ever and of course the first reaction of the organism is to cough and splutter we get you know hot flushes we may have diarrhea we may vomit you know we sweat the body just immediately goes into what is this essentially an acute reaction to remove this poison as quickly as possible from the, from the body and but after a while if we keep smoking more and more cigarettes after a while you know why the body could tolerate five cigarettes a day now you treat now you're smoking two packets a day and and the body's tolerance just without just coughing be, without coughing no problems yeah and <laughs> and and so and so you know are we saying that the cigarettes are not doing any harm to the body that's a crazy concept but if we look at it in the concept of toxemia you know the healthier the organism the more vital the organism the lower its point of tolerance so we see in children who are healthy and clean and have very high vitality they build up a small amount of toxic waste material in the bloodstream and boom their body kicks into a fever straight away that's why children raise fevers all the time because their point of tolerance for poisons in the bloodstream is very low but as we get older and as we suppress those illnesses of our children with medications and so forth you know the the point of tolerance gets higher you know so we can put more and more rubbish in before the body's going to respond before the body's going to react and try and throw that out and so if we're talking about someone in the chronic state their point of tolerance is very high they can put lots and lots of stuff into their body before they're going to get any response from the organism now after each healing crisis that point of tolerance so you're going to raise a fever and the body's going to throw out waste material and it always is a case that the last poison in is the first poison out so if we're dealing with someone who's a chronic state of disease there's a lot of long term long held on to waste material deposited throughout that organism and so we're going to get a fever and the body's going to throw out the waste material and then after a few days maybe a week all the symptoms are going to die down and and we get to the point there that we think oh that's it we're cured i've had that fever i'm all good to go now but no that's just the start it's just a start but what has happened from this one round of fever is that the body's tolerance level has been reduced so the body won't take you know the the fever has basically dropped you down below the level of tolerance probably a little bit below it and so each time we have a fever the tolerance level reduces so that we get more vitality we get you know we always say a a healthy organism is a responsive organism and the and yep. in a and in a chronic state 
in a chronic state, we don't see a lot of response. And in a chronic state, we see pain and we see problems throughout the organism and, and organs not functioning correctly and so forth and so on. But we don't see, we don't, but that's just a constant state. It's not an acute state and it just, and it continues on. And as Kalyan was talking yep. about, you know, the various stages of disease, you know, like hardening, you know, hardening uh, all your arthritic cases, you know, heart problems, arterial problems. Um, you know, we're talking about hardening of the organism here, you know, stones, kidney stones, bladder stones, you know, gall stones. This is hardening. And, and to get a natural, a natural cure of these conditions, we're going to need heat. We're going to need heat. Heat is a catalyst. Yes. It liquefies Obvious. the waste. It liquefies this waste material and, the, and by liquefying it, it gets it back into the circulatory flow and from there it can be eliminated through the organs of elimination being the skin, the lungs and the kidneys. So, you know, when we see a person who's come to a practitioner and a practitioner has put them on a healthy a program of health building absolutely you know th this person is going to get a reduction of symptoms you know what the 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 symptom that got them to the office yes, of the health practitioner side. yeah is 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 you know will be likely you know it's going to go down but is this cure it's on its way but it's not Complete. Yeah, so on this, uh, Victoria, uh, yeah. we had a question uh, yeah. in our uh, notification when we posted yeah. about this live session with the topic. Yes. Yes. There is something yeah. called a non-crisis uh, diet plan. A non-crisis so, uh, Non-crisis diet plan. And, diet uh, plan. It is a claim. Yeah, it is, it is a claim that uh, with that non-crisis diet plan, the chronic uh, problems can be cured. So what is your viewpoint on that? I, that's just absolutely not factual for a start let's 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 look at it dialectically as well for a start non-crisis diet program so they're looking at one of the eight elements of health required for the human organism so all they're doing is changing the diet we know we know very much that if we change a person's diet from you know the the, the chronic organism which is struggling under this unhealthy diet, we change that to a healthy diet. Of course, we are going to get a change in symptoms. Of course, we're going to get a reduction in symptoms. But this is far, far short of a true cure, you know, like it doesn't take into any consideration any of the other requirements for health of the, of the organism. If somebody walked into my office and I just put them on a diet plan, it would just be, it, you know, it's what we call unilaterally treating a disease and a symptom, really. And what we but know But definitely is, there will be reduction in symptoms. Of course. Sure. Of course there's going to be a reduction in symptoms. Yes. And, and might I say in defense of the person offering the, the, the diet plan, you know, it's going to be an increase in health of the organism because we know there's a lot of damage done to the organism by eating the incorrect diet. So, yes, this person's level of health will improve. We are not denying that whatsoever. Of course, yes, their level, of course, their level of health is going to improve when we take them off. So any <laughs> as, measure to conserve vitality will improve the sense of life for sure. Yeah, I, was re yeah. I, was reading, I was reading some works by um, Herbert Shelton the other day and he was saying if you take someone off the standard death-dealing diet, <laughs> what's his words? He speaks so frankly. Take someone off the standard death-dealing diet and put them on a more sensible eating plan. Of course, we are going to see a reduction in symptoms. The person's going to feel better. Of course, they're going to feel better. We've, simply, simply by changing the diet, we will increase the vitality of the organism. Most definitely. But that falls far short of a complete cure. And as we we're saying, in, the chronic, in a chronic state of disease, we're talking about, you know, remember, disease is a process. You may have heard me say that before. Disease is a process. And when we're talking about someone in the chronic state, this process has been going on, generally speaking, for always, has been going on for a very long time. So... I'm 48 years of age. If I presented to, you know, I'm working with clients who are around about my age at the moment and, and from doing diagnosis on them, I can see that this 
disease process has been going on their whole lives. So when we want to turn, you know, the degeneration process, basically disease is a degeneration process, but it, and it takes a long time. And we're going to turn that around by following the nature cure lifestyle, which nature cure is not a diet. Diet is only one of those things. And this is where I'm getting a real bugger. No, I'm going to post nature cure is not a diet. <laughs> nature cure is a complete method of lo- of living you know so so we 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 provide a healthier diet for, for the organism we're going to get healthier responses of the organism we're going to increase the vitality of the organism but as degeneration takes a long time regeneration because the minute you know and this is what i think you know is an important thing to note you know the minute this as kevin hinted would say the precise nanosecond You remove the cause. The body will start healing itself. Of course, you know, the body is a self-healing organism. And all we need to do is remove the cause, remove those causes, and your body's going to start healing itself straight away. But a process of degeneration that has gone on for years, for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, is going to take quite some time to get you right back to to the stage of complete cure. Now, regeneration doesn't take as long, luckily, as degeneration, but, yes. it, still do, but it still does take time. So um, pop into someone's office and they go, here, follow this diet and you'll be fully cured in 12 months' time. That falls far short. It falls far short. It's not scientific. <laughs> you know, which, I again... Understand. Uh, yeah, I understood, absolutely. but unarguably there will be reduction of the symptoms. Uh, absolutely, if, if yeah. Any measures, any measures of conservation okay. of vitality is taken up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. And 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 if someone is feeling, you know, and this is what you need to understand as well is that you know the fever, the acute state. This is the response of the organism. Okay. It's the response of the organism. It's not something we can go, oh, hey, presto, we'll get a fever going here, you know, or, or not, or, or alternatively, or not have, you know. So to say that this, this healing process will be without the acute state, it will be without fever, you're going to get fully well without fever, well, you can't control that. Well, you can. You can control it by suppression. So, so you can't say if this person goes, on this diet, which is a very healthy diet, they're going to get completely well and they won't raise a fever at any stage between disease, chronic disease, and complete cure. You're either, yeah. you're either dealing with someone, well, for a start, if you're dealing with someone with extremely low vitality that does not raise a fever, then if they've got such low vitality, there's no way they've become cured. Their symptoms have reduced, but they're not cured. And the other way would be is if we suppress the organism. And we know very, very well we've had taught well, one of our last talks was cure versus suppression, you know. So we know that we know that suppression is not cure. So if we take a person who's chronic and we've put them on a diet, um, and maybe we do a few other things as well, we follow a few of the other nature cure requirements, you know. And we put this in a program for the person. If they don't raise a fever, the fever is the response of the organism. If they don't raise a fever, it is because their vitality is too low to do so or there is suppression of some kind at work. And that's it. There's nothing else to it. So, yeah. And at the, at the philosophical level, at the philosophical level, mm. uh, being, a, being a student of psychology, I, I, yeah. I look at... Uh, everything on the philosophical aspect so yeah. so there is a philosophy behind this term non crisis as if yeah. the crisis is a very fearful uh, yeah. or harmful yeah. thing mm. scary scary so thing we need to yeah. as a, as a nature cure follower you need to understand the beauty of fever yeah that that should be understood mm. other than understanding and acknowledging this fact of uh, fever, the kind of uh, boon it is, or mm. the kind of friend it is. Yes, uh, we we cannot pursue uh, this this uh, exact lifestyle of nature cure or nature sync lifestyle. No, Isn't absolutely it? not. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest problem from the point of view of 
the sufferer and also the point of view of so many of the practitioners out there, you know, they don't understand fever. They're frightened of it. You know, we hear stories in the medical literature of fevers getting out of control. But, you know, this is, an, this, is a, this is a mismanaged fever. This is not the fever. It's the mismanagement of the fever that causes these things. You know, it's the bungling of people getting in the way of nature, basically, that causes the fever well, to get us, so Let hard. us take a few, few other yeah, questions. Yeah, for uh, sure. So a uh, few people are uh, finding uh, little uh, disturbances in the yeah. network. What about yeah, others? Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can hear you clearly, see you clearly. Uh, I think you also <coughs> do so. Uh, but yeah. uh, please <clears throat> confirm others, uh, those uh, who are uh, finding it pretty uh, well uh, transmission, so that mm. we are assured that the recordings are good. So yeah, I was hearing some interference. To healing crisis. So there was... Okay. So there was a question uh, from Kedar, uh, long-term hmm. swelling equals to healing crisis? Do you want to take, take this? Well, uh, it is, it is, it is, it is. Long-term swelling, inflammation. Well, well, if you have long-term sw swelling, we'll call this a chronic state because if, when we talk about crises, what will happen if, if you know, like a, a f inflammation is basically a localized fever. That's what it is. You know, it's a, in one particular area of the body. And, in the chronic state, so if we see arthritic conditions and so forth like that, these swellings are, are hardened swellings and so forth. And so for, for a swelling in some area to go down, there either needs to be a systemic fever or there needs to be a drainage point, basically. And, and this is why we quite often will see in chronic cases, we'll see skin eruptions, we'll see uh, um, eczema, we'll see boils, you know, boils are just a classic example of the body, you know, opening up the skin and using that as a drainage point to get this, you know, waste material out of the bloodstream. So, you know, if you had someone who was in a chronic state of health and they had this, you know, this long term, you know, swelling, say it was around the knee joint and so forth, you know, and they weren't raising a fever, and if you put them on this healthy diet, you know, we're stopping to put so many poisons in, you know, there's a great removal of cause there in itself. The skin will open up, the skin will push that poison out, and it might run that boil for, I've heard of people having active boils for years, for years, trying to drain poisons out of the organism where they did not have enough vitality to raise a fever. You see, if the person has enough vitality, if we remove the pressure off the organism, if we conserve the vitality and there is enough vitality there and there is a need for it, the body will always initiate a fever. Remember, the fever is the physiological response of the organism. It's not something we can dial up or order or put on hold unless we use suppressive treatments. So... If a person has a, has, a, has a localized swelling, then there's going to need to be some method of drainage for that swelling because that's what's causing the swelling. Right. Yeah. Right. So there is yeah. a question from Anuj, Anuj Kumawat. Uh, yeah. He was one of the presenters in uh, homo homeostasis conference, uh, very youngsters, uh, yoga sun expert. So he asked that he is new to nature care. Kindly explain healing crisis. Okay. So uh, I think it's a yeah. uh, it uh, asked little uh, back. So yeah. meanwhile we explained uh, healing crisis, but I'll just briefly uh, try to explain. See the cause of uh, the health problem. The one cause of the health problem, if we want to identify, then that is the depletion of vitality or the innervation, mm. and the reversal of the health problem also lies there mm. the conservation of the vitality both are yep. reversing one is the For depletion sure. other is the conversation one is the extra engagement of the vitality and other is the disengagement of the vitality or the conservation mm. of the vitality so mm -hmm. when we keep on doing we call it conscious consistent conservation of vitality when mm -hmm. we keep on doing that then the body will have a lot of conserved vitality within it Yes. And with that conserved vitality, body will raise the temperature of the body to get rid of the toxins. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is what is the healing crisis. 
Yeah. So healing crisis is an acute condition of the body where the yes. temperature of the body will go beyond 37 degrees centigrade or 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. That's correct. Absolutely. Uh, please confirm if it is understandable, uh, Anuj. Uh, let's take other questions. Gauri was having some network issues. Maybe uh, she will be watching the recording. Um, Mew yes. says that nature cure is not a diet. I did it for you, like Victoria. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Minu. I get a real, you know, and Kevin yeah. Hinton, Kevin, Kevin Hinton get, used to get really frustrated. Nature cure is not a diet. <laughs> nature cure is yeah, not yeah, a diet yeah. or a diet Mohit, plan. That's Mohit one. Came up with a, <laughs> yeah, Mohit came up with a beautiful line. Uh, Mohit yeah. Trivedi, who was one of the participants yeah. also of uh, last uh, course. And beauty of crisis itself, which generally yeah. brings creativity. That's that's yeah. really, that's a kind of philosophical mm. uh, sentence, yeah. I must say. Uh, but it's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Creativity of the body, he explains it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, others the, are confirming the, in, the that, innate, uh, the innate that, knowledge that the of the organism. Yeah. It's in, you know, the body knows in exactly, in in, yeah, the capability. The body mm. knows exactly what to do. You know, the body knows, the body is best able to manage its affairs in health and it is best even more so able to manage its affairs in disease and so we don't try and suppress the organism we don't try and alter the organism we identify and remove causes we provide the requirements for health of the human organism and when the body initiates a cycle of healing we get out of the way and we allow it to run its course and there is no safer, safer thing on this planet than a properly managed fever. And so, you know, for anybody who wants to work with clients, with, for anybody who's working with people who we're trying to help people get well, that's your job. Your job is to instill confidence in that person, to educate the person. You know, once we've done a diagnosis, we'll have a fairly good idea of what kind of symptoms they're going to experience when the body goes into the healing crisis. So we can say to them, when your body raises a fever, you can expect that you're going to get, there's going to be some kidney pain here, the urine is going to become very dark. You may have vomiting because there's a problem in, you know, the digestive system. There's likely to be some rashes of this. We'll know, you know, the, the person's got weakness in the lungs. We know there's going to be some heavy-duty elimination going on through the lungs, etc. How to, ma you know, how to get, keep this person comfortable and the biggest, biggest thing is keeping them calm, keeping them cool with what's going on so that they can mentally rest just as much as they are physically resting, they're going to bed and physiologically resting by not eating, you know, and, and people get, you know, very excited about the concept of fasting. Fasting is nothing more than rest. It's not about not eating. It's about providing rest to the organism. It's about conservation of energy. That's it. That's it. The body does Very good, the audience. The body does everything else. Yeah. So management we, of fevers, yeah, yeah. fever means just three points. Yeah. Rest, rest, rest. Physical <laughs> rest, rest, physiological rest, rest, and psychological rest. rest. That's it. P, That's P, it. P. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there is a comment from Mohit again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the ultimate objective, the journey back to the true complete health or getting away from the symptoms through difference, different measures of conserving vitality. So the homeostasis is the objective. Any input from you, uh, Victoria? What's the well, ultimate well, objective? Well, you know, and, and, and in defense, again, of the people who are out there and they're offering the, 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 the healing crisis-free cure or diet plan or whatever, you know, like that's up to the individual, you know, like what is your objective, you know, is your, it depends on how sick you are, how chronic you are, how, you know, what is your objective, you know, and it's going to be different depending on the stage of the disease and how, you know, how sick this person is. Is it a realistic, you know, is it, you know, I get people who come to me, we are not going to get a cure here. And I say that to them. I say, we're not going to get a cure here, but what we're going to get is the best possible outcome that we that you are going to be capable of and this is another thing you know the 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 organism the organism can live for a long time 
in a state of irreversible disease. Okay. And this is the thing, you know, if we stop, you know, if we know that this disease is not going to be curable, but we stop poisoning the organism every day with the wrong diet and we start paying attention to all of the elements required for health and we start providing the organism with more rest, we free up the vitality of the organism, you're going to get some longevity out of this person and you're going to get quality of life. So somebody might go to a practitioner and all they want is this rash on their elbow that's been there for five years to go away. And the person might be put on a diet and the diet makes the rash go away. But that's just a reduction in symptoms. If the person's happy with that, if that's all they want, then that is them. We're not here to tell people, you know, philosophically what they should and shouldn't be doing. You know, it's up to the individual. You know, if you want complete cure you are not going to get it if the only thing you pay attention to is your diet absolutely not going to happen you know you will get a reduction in symptoms but cure we're not talking cure here you know it's not right. it's not so, the case yeah so the sixth point of the session that we picked up mm. is natural yeah. healing journey is incomplete with healing crisis yeah Nat nat natural healing journey is incomplete with without uh, healing crises in crisis yeah. so uh, would, would you like to share uh, your uh, experience of tonsillitis and uh, all those stuff that we discussed yeah. earlier well, well you know i think actually um we would we, we were discussing yesterday on saying to kalyan you know when i was four years old um because of wrong feeding i used to get tonsillitis all the time and so at a very young age they i think i was might have even been three oh I had my tonsils removed. And I also remember as a child, I used to get terrible ear aches and so forth as well. So, of course, all of that's connected in, the, in that area. So my tonsils have been removed now. So, you know, for me, a perfect state of health is not possible. It's not possible. You know, part of the body has been removed. And so, um, you know, even in when I'm in a very good state of health, if I take my temperature, I'm always slightly a little bit less than 37 degrees. I don't, I, my body will not sit at 37 because I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a complete organism anymore. So, um, you know, and, and it, um, but another thing I was saying to Kalyan, you know, a, a weak area, because we all have weak areas. For me, a weak area is my lower spine. It always has been. And, and a number of years ago, um, I got, all of a sudden, a really chronic onset of sciatic pain down my right leg. And for a period of about 12 months, I was in extremely, you know, debilitating pain. Um, and I worked with um, <coughs> Kevin and Katie Hinton. And over that 12 months, I was saying to Kalyan, you could, you could almost write it on your calendar. Every six weeks, I raised a fever because I was doing everything I was told to do. The diet was right. The doing hydrotherapy i was just paying attention to all of the elements etc every six weeks i was raising a fever and after each one of those fevers the pain level was reduced knock on and after you know subsequent healing crises i got to the stage now where you know now i have a wonderful quality of life i have no no sciatic pain i'm active again i'm you know living my life in great quality and 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 you know, but I also know, you know, that um, I have a weakness there. You know, I know that when I stop looking after myself, because we're all human, we all fall off the wagon a little bit here and there. If I stop looking after myself and, you know, stop paying attention, you know, to the elements, etc. It's the first thing that will, you know, I be, I've become very sensitive. You know, I notice any slight niggle any little twitch anything going on in those lower vertebrae and as soon as i feel anything i'm step up my actions and i get back on you know get back into the program and 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 it will go away sort of thing so you know even there right. you know we, we could we could say that i haven't got a cure there you know I, but what we could say is you know i've re removed the causes i'm living the elements i've observed the healing crises and now my level of tolerance is very very low so it doesn't take much to, and that's, you know, as I say, you know, a healthy organism is a responsive organism. So, um, so there's a learning for uh, all the people yeah. those who are sharing their natural, yeah. natural healing journey by yeah. changing their diets and all yeah. those stuff. 
तो प्लीज ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड माइंडफुली द ब्यूटी ऑफ द हीलिंग क्राइसिस एंड द नीड ऑफ द हीलिंग क्लेमिंग दैट यू यू हैव switched over your uh, lifestyle to a uh, healthy diet and uh, a little bit of the changes of the lifestyle and uh, experience a uh, reduction of the symptom please 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 don't consider that as cure and try to think as much as possible and expect a fever expect yeah. a healing crisis yeah absolutely yeah at, for, least, yeah at least the first healing crisis will give you the indication the beauty of it absolutely then you'll realize what cure means is mm. and and the methods we use to move a person from we, you know to get a, to get a cure we need to move that person from the chronic state to the acute state and a chronic yes. person and a chronic person will not get into the acute state until we have you know lifted enough vitality basically we've raised the vitality we've 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 conserved enough energy and and that can take quite some time you know i have clients who came to me 2 years ago who still haven't raised a fever yet because their state of health is so chronic now in the 2 years that you know they've been following the program I've put them on their their quality of life has improved remarkably you know they they're not suffering so badly anymore etc but they know they know that they're not cured they know they've you know the body still has not returned to its state of of optimum vitality because they know that they've never and you know this is the other thing the the ultimate test if you're going to say somebody's cured of their chronic state or well, take their temperature take their temperature if they are sitting at 37 degrees or 98.6 degrees they're not chronic anymore that is true but if you're selling to this person who's had a symptom reduction that they're cured and then you go and take their temperature and they're sitting below that they're chronic end of story you know that's yeah. the ultimate you know so let's such... accept the fact we all yeah. may be chronic we, we all chronic. may be chronic there's no problem <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. chronic yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely absolutely but it's the not fact that, you know fact. we cannot change yeah. the fact uh, yeah yeah absolutely and and so right so there is a question there is yeah. a question from uh, gurmeet yeah yeah go on go on we'll take that question after that Please. I was just saying, saying yesterday when Kalyan and I were, were talking, we we're just preparing for today's session. We we're talking about the healing crisis, and and he and I were both saying, yeah, we're looking forward to the next one <laughs> because Kalyan's got certain symptoms. Indeed. I feel like I'm about ready for one, and and uh, you know, yeah, like yeah, 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 it would be nice, you know, and it would be great if we could just say, yep, dial one up. I'm ready for it, you know. But that's not how the organism works. The body will raise. it's a physiological it will take the, yeah it will, it will take long it, time long time comparing uh, yeah. to the instant relief that you go yeah. for a medicinal uh, option Absolutely. you know for example yeah. i'm i'm yeah. i'm undergoing a healing crisis long healing crisis from last two months uh, for my uh, toxemic kidney kidney yeah. toxemic i don't know uh, kidney toxemic is a limited term it's a blood toxin yeah. and yeah. being eliminated through kidneys through right? the kidneys so of course yeah. there was uh, through the kidneys so i had yeah. a repeated fever episodes and all those stuff those who were the uh, attendees of uh, homeostasis they know that during that period also uh-huh. this uh, healing crisis was going on so still it is going on if the question comes that how long will it go the two months is over yeah. maybe i'm expecting another 15 days to continue with this the cloudy urine and the pain abdominal pain and all these things are there so uh, on this question that how long will it be there so the counter question should be how long did it take to appear <laughs> it took yeah. it, it took 40 40 years yeah it took 40 years to appear <laughs> and accumulated so so to yeah. throw away through throw away uh, it's definitely at least few yeah. months you need to give yeah, yeah. absolutely and, and, and in yeah, the process absolutely. the next point yeah yeah well, as in we the were process, saying actually mm-hmm. that philosophical mm-hmm. shift from pain to suffering yeah go on yeah. after that i'll and and uh, and that's and that's and that's what we and that's what we were saying you know and this is the thing you know nobody wants to feel pain nobody wants to suffer no one wants discomfort of course not but the fact of the matter is 
you know, the healing process can be uncomfortable and we're going to go through some discomfort and we're going to go through some pain. And, and when I work with my clients, I say, well, this is coming and it's not going to be nice, <laughs> you know. And, and, and we as an animal, we want to, you know, because we're so, you know, we've got such big brains, we want to avoid suffering at all costs, it would seem, you know. And we, we seem to be prepared to... Even, you know, and, and we go to the doctor and we have a rash or we have a pain and they give us some sort of medication and we take it and it goes away real quick, goes away really quick. And so we have this perception that cure has happened and we have this perception that that is health, you know, but health doesn't work quick. It doesn't work quick. You know, disease is a long, long standing process and rep reparation going to take time you know it's not going to be you know you're not going to be well in a couple of weeks time sorry it doesn't work that way and that's another thing we really you know it's about education it's about getting people to understand how the body actually really does work so that we don't have un we don't have you know yeah, in incorrect expectations yeah please yeah, let us take this question uh gurmit hi gurmit uh, gurmit uh, wished uh, good morning to all, uh, both of us so uh does uh, in any case a question of excess vitality arise how to cope <laughs> up with such situation beautiful question uh, <laughs> i love yeah, it yeah absolutely well <laughs> well well you know excess, excess. Ex would never be a problem you know like we we can sometimes have a problem of excess nerve reaction but an actual vitality itself no that's never going to be a problem and 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 this really brings us a great question, you know, because it brings us back to this concept of the point of tolerance. You see, if we have very high vitality, we are only going to have vi high vitality if you're, if you're, you know, young and healthy, really, you know, and, and, you know, that high vitality is going to mean that, you know, the, you will never get to the, a person with very high vitality will never get to the chronic state because they're going to, well, they will eventually if we keep suppressing each acute illness but they're going to rate you know they're only going to take a small amount of toxin whole you know the body will only allow it to hold a small amount of toxin and then it will throw it out it will raise the fever and you and it will get rid of it you know so um yeah there's never going to be a problem <laughs> yeah, so I'd like to, I'd like to, yeah, the, yeah. The, that's really a technical yeah. Uh, yeah. explanation yeah. from you yeah. victoria yeah. thanks for yeah. that so i'll, yeah. I'll gurmit I'll, I'll just uh uh, add something onto this. Yeah, please. So if we if we look uh, look at the things uh, in this manner, that form and formless, two aspects mm. are there. The yeah. Life life is a combination of form and formless. Mm. So the form, the excess of form is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> be it anything, be it anything, your your body uh, body yeah. mass or yeah, yeah, your yeah. materialistic achievement, anything. Yeah. Yeah. If it is excess, then it is a toxin. Yeah. But the excess of formless can never be a problem. So formless no. could be your intelligence, formless yeah. could be your understanding then, level or yeah. formless your, your compassion or yeah. whatever it may be. Oh. Vitality is also a formless aspect. Well, yeah, it's it your energy. The amount of excess. Yes, your energy. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, excess is the better uh, yeah, aspect for absolutely. the formless. Yeah, absolutely. Indeed. So the last and, point and, of the yeah. session, yeah. I was just going to say, and, yeah, you know, go, go and, 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 that, and that is something that, you know, is, is ultimately, you know, like when people come to you and they're chronic and they're, you know, they have very low, lowered vitality. They don't have energy. They don't have ability, you know. And, and, you know, they look at the young people and they go, oh, how I would love to have some of that, of their energy. Well, you used to have their energy and you've blown it, you know. So, so it's a long, slow process. So, yeah, energy is what... You know, everyone in the chronic state wants. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. So the last. Absolutely. Absolutely. So summing last, up, Kalyan, uh, point, our last point. Yes. Philosophical shift. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> philosophical shift yeah. Pain versus uh, suffering. So I'd mm. like to start this uh, point with a uh, um, uh, repeat reminder from uh, Kevin Hinton uh, that pain is mm. monitored and rest yeah. is cured. Yes. You know, yes. so uh, what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of yes. this? Suppose you have a wrist pain and you are mm. not able to move the wrist from this position to this position. Mm. There is a pain here. Now, yeah. that means the body is working at this position to clear the toxin. And it is asking you to not to move. Mm. Right. Now, 
if you move it then you will restrict the initiative of the body mm. now the pain is a monitor here not allowing you to move mm. right so if if you are moving defying the command of the body then mm. you are actually defying the initiative of the body correct and you are interrupting the cure mm -hmm. so this is this is to be understood the pain to be acknowledged as this is a monitor for us to get cure mm -hmm. now definitely pain comes with suffering definitely. now suffering as they say the suffering is optional pain is, pain is mandatory so if you perceive pain dialectically then the amount of suffering will tremendously reduce this needs an understanding this needs an understanding and delving deeper deeper to mm. to uh, to get the benefit of the complete phenomena mm. so as as uh, victoria mentioned about the point of tolerance that we, we, as we increase our conservation of the vitality the body will respond back very easily quickly and will become yeah. sensitive very sensitive from yes. being insensitive so with this journey the threshold of pain bearing will be also increasing mm. as the sensitivity also will be increasing the mm. threshold of the pain bearing also will be mm. increasing so if yeah. if the people are thinking that no we are heading towards a suffering life a yeah. life full of suffering no yeah. the things no. will happen is the increase in the threshold of the pain bearing so yeah. you will be able to enjoy the benefit of pain without suffering so that's the mm. philosophical sh shift that you are going mm. to enjoy if you yeah. embrace the lifestyle dialectically understanding it mm. for sure at a deeper level absolutely right. anything you want to add uh, here well you know and but but also katie you has know. joined welcome katie oh, thanks welcome uh, katie thanks a lot for joining katie has <laughs> lovely joined. Yeah, yeah, Lovely. yeah. I had, a, I had, <laughs> I had a, a bit of a, uh, always, yeah. always. Yes, I, she and I had a bit of a conversation um, on the text this morning about about it, and uh, she she was okay. she was saying, okay. yeah, you know, okay. the, the, you know, to to suggest that you know a few a full cure, you know, there are just certain streams of of health philosophy that just don't understand fever. They don't understand it philosophically, and they don't understand how to manage it correctly. And therein lies the 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 inception of the you know the healing crisis free diet plan cure so um we know that we need the healing crisis we know if we you know release some vitality in the organism the body is going to respond and it's going to and we know that the fever is a physiological response of the organism so we don't suppress the organism we work with the organism and there's going to be some pain and philosophically we've got to accept that you know we've got to accept that there's going to be some discomfort there are methods in which we can manage pain so that we don't you know we we want to minimize suffering as much as possible but um on your journey Katie to health just messaged yeah please Katie please. has just messaged that sentence uh, that uh, pain is monitor and rest is cure i think yeah, i think yeah. uh, before Katie has absolutely. joined us we just shared we that sentence that, yeah, as well yeah, absolutely yeah. yeah and that's from yeah. uh, dr john hilton and uh, it's yeah. you know that one of those true never okay, never john a true word yeah dr right. john hilton was the, was the originator of that but uh, all of us in the nature cure okay. field okay. hold absolutely. on hold on to that one but i was shared by <laughs> kevin repeatedly yeah, yeah i learned it from yeah. kevin during my kevin. healing crisis yeah. he used to he used to say that uh -huh. repeatedly Yes. The pain is going to be your monitor, and rest is yes. the cure. So can yeah. you rest? So there's a question yeah. from Mohit: Can yeah. we really have excess vitality, or it's something which is there in the right or harmonious state amount? Uh, isn't it either engaged or dis disengaged? Uh, so if we conserve it, then doesn't it back to the normal hormone? absolutely right mm -hmm. mohit has pointed out this is uh, this yeah. point very well. so the the yeah. uh, the the word or the ad adjective excess vitality give a notion that we can increase vitality that's not yeah. a uh, mm -hmm. th that's not possible ever mm -hmm. so we no. have a fixed amount of vitality and there is an Correct. engagement and disengagement phenomena working within us so yes. there is no point of excess ever mm -hmm. yes no 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 it's Just not the excess sense, sense of yeah. life will be increasing yeah better. yes yes right for sure indeed yeah so uh, I, um, i request others to uh, put their comment or question if you have any yeah yeah uh, absolutely so otherwise yeah 
Yeah. I'm just going to Otherwise we'll we'll call it a day. I'm yeah, just going please, I'm please just declare. I'm just going I'm going to read I'm going to read a wee quote that I came across from Dr. Henry please, Lind please. Dr. Dr. Henry Lindlar who is one of our great early naturopathic or, or nature cure forefathers sort of thing and he says he says a, ge a genuine and truly effective house cleaning must start in the cells and must be brought about through the initiative of the vital energies of the organism through healing crises and not through stimulation by poisons or irritants so it's it's something that is inherent in the cells and the tissues and it's initiated by the vital energies and if we don't have enough vitality then we will not have and the house cleaning is the fever and that's what it is it's the extraordinary effort of the organism Absolutely. and it's not something to be afraid of and it's not something to not you know it's it's to be welcomed you know and it's not going to be fun but but it's an <coughs> you know an amazing healing effort of the organism and and if we truly want to move a person from the chronic state to health it is done through the 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 organism it's done through the 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 mechanism should i say of of the acute state and um yes yeah absolutely Indeed. so yeah mm, for sure Indeed. so we don't have any further question uh, yeah. i think and uh, yeah yeah it's 10:30 uh, or 3 p.m. at your end yep. so uh, we'll call it a day and day. We'll definitely yep. uh, joining joining for another session sooner Yes. Uh, we took two months uh, for this session, <laughs> but we had yeah, homeos. We had homeos day. Uh, we had homeostasis in the middle. Oh, yeah, please. What does Katie have to say? Yeah, Katie said uh, fever is our friend. Indeed, absolutely, friend, Abs cool absolutely, absolutely. I right. remember. I remember Katie. Right. Katie saying on a beach to me and a friend of mine one day. You know, if there was two pieces of advice, health advice, she could give someone. The first would be to never take drugs either. pharmaceutical or recreational and the other piece of advice was to never suppress the fever so i just thought yep so without any advice. addition we'll call it thank, a day and absolutely thanks thanks to all advice. the participants yeah yeah thank you thank for you. joining everyone thank you. lovely so we'll, we'll take care see you next yeah. time bye bye, bye, -bye. <laughs>